issue two, the, the, the seeds of issue two began developing in the summer of 2013 in the Ohio Constitutional Modernization Commission. And the reason the Ohio Constitutional Modernization Commission, of which I am a member, began talking about this issue was because we'd seen in other states, and in Ohio, but we'd seen in the 16 states that allowed the constitutional initiative process, this trend of self-selected investors going together, hiring political professionals, um, qualifying initiative petitions for the ballot to try to corner the market on something. In California, it began in the year 2000 when the highway lobby hired some slick political uh, professionals to qualify a proposed amendment for the ballot to require that 90% of all transportation funding would go to highway building. Fortunately, the voters of California turned it down by a 58 to 42 ratio. What was that? It was an attempt to corner the market on transportation funding to strangle mass transit. Um, now, issue two, uh, the, these discussions on what was going on in California, what was going on in other states, where self-selected investors were trying to seize any popular or popular sounding issue, put money behind it, and try to create a monopoly for themselves, or a commercial exclusive, if you don't like the term monopoly, clearly a commercial exclusive for themselves. Um, and we, we began discussing how do we deal with that. Well, we knew from our research that 19 other states had monopoly bans in their constitutions. 19 other states, some of them going back to statehood, have specific anti-monopoly provisions in their constitutions. So we began discussing, should we offer this to Ohioans? Because this is a new trend, and it's, the, it's a disturbing trend. We were discussing it at our slow bureaucratic governmental process, and yes, it is slow and bureaucratic, when something happened in March of 2015. And in March of 2015, the group that later took on the name Responsible Ohio showed up at the Attorney General's office, filed their uh, initial petition to uh, get it qualified, to go out and gather signatures. We then read about it in the papers in, the, in subsequent days, and we thought, holy crap, look at this. Ten properties, exclusive control. Nobody else could sell marijuana but owners of these ten properties. We didn't know marijuana was coming. We knew about highway funding. We knew about casinos. We knew about some green energy guys that wanted to corner the market. We had no idea that this would be tried for marijuana. My position is not marijuana. I don't care about marijuana. If folks want to legalize it, fine. I do care a lot about the Constitution and what should and what should not be in the Constitution. It's for fundamental things. It's for things that benefit all of us. It's not for things that benefit 10 landowners and their co-investors, the core of the market. And it could be in perpetuity because one of the, and you have to read the amendment, please do, 6,500 words. One of the provisions of that amendment says that these 10 landowners can acquire land around them if they can find a willing seller, and they certainly would because they'd be willing to pay premium prices to do it, as long as they can show the state that they're meeting demand year to year, nobody else can ever enter the market. The only way the state could ever grant another license to an 11th, 12th, or 13th landowner is if the state could prove through annual audits, supply and demand audits, that these 10 are not meeting the demand. They have the ability to expand forever, to be a permanent <coughs> monopoly in your state constitution. So whether it's parsnips, whether it's potatoes, whether it's highway funding, whether it's green energy, or whether it's marijuana, that's my issue. If we want to legalize marijuana, we could have done it through the statutory process. Ohio, and I'll end on this, Ohio is one of 14 states that allows its citizens both the constitutional initiative and the statutory initiative. <coughs> the statutory initiative is to revise the Ohio Revised Code. You may remember in 2006, the Ohio Lung Association chose that route because the legislature was not acting to bring clean air to all of her places of public assembly. Some people were frustrated, the legislature hadn't done it, so they went out, they qualified an issue for the ballot to amend the Ohio Revised Code to make sure our places of public assembly were smoke-free. The people approved it overwhelmingly, and since 2006 we've had smoke-free air in all of our places of public assembly. To legalize marijuana, the same route could have been taken. Had that route been taken, I wouldn't be here tonight. The reason I'm here tonight is because I abhor the idea, and I hope you abhor the idea, of folks wanting to put a business exclusive in your state constitution where it doesn't belong.